learn how to make an awesome login form, including focus management, keyboard types, autocomplete, loading indications, form validation, and much, much more. Hey, this is Flo, and in this video, we will build a login form together. First, we will build a generic layout, and then we will add more steps to it and more features to it as we go along. So as always, I have an empty project here. Let me zoom in a bit. And we will just start by creating a VStack with a spacing of 16. Now in here, we will have an image, a text field for the user's email, a text field for the user's password, and a login button, basically. For that, I have already prepared a login image here that we can just use. Of course, you can use any image that you want. So let's get started. First of all, we will add that login image that I just told you about. We'll make it resizable and we'll make it scaled to fit. So it takes up all of the available space, but it never goes out of bounds. So it stays inside of its frame, basically. Next up, we will add a text field, which is for the user's email. And as the text, just for you know, simplicity's sake, Let's use a constant empty string here, just so we can be a bit quicker with the implementation. Next, we will add the password field, which is basically a secure field, also has a title of password and also just a constant empty string as a value. And then lastly, we will also add the login button with an empty action. We will fill that in later as well. Let's run this in the simulator and see how this very basic approach looks like. Okay, so you can see this really looks super basic right now and we will get into making this look a lot better over the next few minutes. First of all, we will add a package to have a very fancy button down here. To add that package, we will go to our project, to our target, scroll down to frameworks and hit add package dependency. Let's wait for the package manager to load. And then we can just enter the GitHub URL. It will also be linked down in the description. The action button is part of the SwiftUI library. If you want to find out more about the SwiftUI library, I have a bunch of videos in my Advent of Packages series about some of those packages. And there's also a link down in the description to find out more about the action button and the SwiftUI library. So let's hit add package and add package again. And now we can use it in our code. So first of all, let's import action button. And then we can already start to use it instead of our login button here. Don't worry about this error. It will go away once we compile. It's really just an Xcode thing. So we can now replace our login button here with an action button that takes in a state so we will have to handle that in a second. An on tab closure, we will also handle that in a second. And then also a background color. In our case, we will just use the primary color. So black for light mode and white for dark mode. To implement the state, we will just add a quick view model here. So let's create a class called view model, which will be an observable object. And in here, we will add a button state. So this will be a published var button state of type action button state. And we will init it with the dot, dot disabled state. There are a bunch of different states. Uh, for example, disabled, there's also loading. We will have a look at all of those during this video. For a disabled state, let's set the title to fill out all fields to log in. and the system image to exclamation mark dot circle. Okay, and now we can add that view model to our view. So let's use a state object private var model and that's just our view model right here. And now we can bind to the button state using the dollar syntax, of course, don't forget the model dot. And now that should also 
already work. And now you can see we have a different kind of button here, the action button from that package, which automatically has that system image of the exclamation mark inside of the circle and the title that we just specified here, fill out all fields to log in. Next up, we will work a bit on the general styling of this login field. For that, we will cut out this VStack and place it inside of a group box. as the content and then as the label we will just add a label with the title welcome back as this is a login screen not a register screen and then a system image of hand.wave.fill let's also add a bit of padding to that group box and let's make sure that the text field style is set to plain currently this is the default but you never know what changes okay this already looks a lot better we have our group box here hence the little gray background we have the rounded corners our label at the top with a little sf symbol we have our two text fields and the button since the button is currently set to disable the user can't even click on it anyways okay let's continue with the next step and that is improving our email field so we had this text field here First of all, we will add a published variable for the email to our view model. So let's say published var email, that's a string. And in the beginning it is empty. Let's also do the same for our password. And now we can replace these constant bindings with bindings to our view model email and our view model password. Okay, this didn't change anything in the UI. So let's continue with some of the more interesting changes. First of all, let's have a look at how the keyboard currently behaves. So as you can see, this is the standard keyboard for any text field. Let's start by improving that. So first of all, let's add a text content type of email address. So the autofill of the user's device can suggest their email address. Next, let's set the keyboard type to email. Next, let's set a submit label to next because we want the user to be able to hit submit here in the first text field and then automatically jump to the next text field. There are two more things that we want to add to that text field and they are both revolved around the focus state. So for that, let's add a focus state, private var focus and it will be of type focusable field we will create a type in just a second so let's add an enum focusable field it needs to conform to hashable so it can be used inside of the focus state property wrapper we will just give it two cases first one is the email field it can be focusable and then the password field as well so now we can add the dot focused modifier to our text field and say if our dollar focus equals dot email then this field is focused and we want on submit to set the focus to the password field so the uh, password field is focus automatically just like that right now take a second and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see and want to learn more about ios development okay let's continue with the password field for that, we will actually create a whole new struct because I want you to be able to hide and show the password depending on how the user wants it. Okay, so let's create a struct. Let's call it password field. You could also reuse this in other projects, of course, and it will be a view. Because of that, it will need to have a body. Let's start with the body. We will have a Z stack with an alignment of trailing like this and then in here we will basically have a check if the user wants to hide the password then we show a secure field and if they want to see the password or show the password we will show a text field so for that we will need to add an at state private var password hidden this is a bool and in the beginning it will be set to true and now here we can just say if 
password hidden. Then let's show a secure field with a, with a given title. So that we need to grab the title here, which will just be a string. And then with a binding to some text variable. So let's create that as well. Binding var text also be of type string. We need to pass in a title and a binding to this view when we create it. So that is already the secure field. And if the password is not hidden, then we will just show a text field also with the title and with the binding to that string. For the password field, I want to make sure that autocorrection is disabled. So disabled autocorrection is set to true. We want the user to be able to toggle between the two fields. So we will add a little button here that will just toggle the password hidden boolean. And then as a label, it will have an image with a system name of either I dot slash if you want to show the password because it is currently hidden. So let's say password hidden. If it is the case, then we want to show I dot slash. Otherwise, we will just want to show I. Let's also make sure we have the correct foreground color for our button here. So in our case, we will use the primary color. And then let's also add a frame to that whole V stack with a height of 18. Okay, now we can use this password field instead of the secure field that we added beforehand. As a title, let's pass in password. And as a text, let's bind to our password property of the view model. Let's also add focus management for this password field. So let's say dot focused if dollar focus equals dot password. Let's add a submit label of go. And let's also add on submit. We want to call the login function of our view model. So let's quickly create that function inside of our view model. Let's say func login. We will fill this out in just a second. And here we will just say model dot login. Let's also add that to the action button. Okay, let's run it in the simulator and see how it works. So let's tap into the email field and you can see there will be the email keyboard. So let's just enter something. Then once we hit the um, next button, my, my keyboard is set to German. So this would be next in English. Then the password field will be focused. We can type in something here, it will be hidden. And then once we tap that little button over here, then it will be shown instead. Okay, next let's handle the state of our login button at the bottom. For that, we will use combine and add some form validation using custom publishers. So first of all, let's import combine. And then let's go down to our view model. Always when you're working with combine, you need to have some sort of um, reference to your cancelables. So let's just say private var cancelables, it will be a set of any cancelable and in the beginning it will be just empty. And now let's create a publisher for our email text field that validates the email text field and one for the password text field. This will be very simple. I will not do any regex, just a very, very, very simple implementation just to show you how it would work. And then you can build upon that, use regex, actually validate the email and the password and so on. So let's create a private var email is valid publisher, which is of type any publisher. It publishes a Boolean variable. So is it valid or not? And it can never throw an error. In here, we can just subscribe to our email field map to whether it is empty or not. So this is our basic validation. So let's just say value in not value dot is empty and then we can erase to any publisher so we have that nice type over here let's copy all of that and do the same for the password is valid publisher okay now that we have these two publishers we can work with them 
So let's create an initializer for our view model and in there we will yeah, initialize our form validation. So we will say email is valid publisher dot combine latest with the latest value of our password is valid publisher. So basically every time that the user enters something into the email text field, we combine that with the latest value of the password uh, is valid publisher. So now we basically have a stream that says whether both of these are valid. So let's map that. Let's call these two value one, value two in, and let's return true only if both of them are true. Okay, now let's once again add another map statement here. This time we can call the argument fields valid. So this argument basically tells us whether both of the text fields are valid and it will return an action button state. Okay, and in here we can just say if fields valid, then return the enabled state. This also takes in a title, let's call it login, and a system image. Let's use checkmark.circle here. Else we will just return disabled again, and here we can basically just copy of over everything from the standard value over here. Once we have done this little map from our two booleans into one boolean, from that one boolean into an action button state, then we can assign this action button state to our actual button state. So let's say assign to button state on self and then let's store in our cancelables. So we have a reference to this subscription and so the pipeline continues. Okay, lastly, let's implement the dummy login function here. So let's start by saying, once the user taps on login, we want to have the loading state for our button. So let's say the button state is dot loading with a title of loading and a system image of person. I think the system image is not shown to the user. And then let's just fake uh, like a network call here and let's say this pitch queue.main.async after now let's say plus 1.5 seconds and then we just want to set the button state to enabled. So let's, cap let's capture weak self in let's say self dot button state equals dot enabled with the title of login and the same system image as before. Okay, now let's run this in the simulator and have a look at our final login form. Okay, so as you can see in the beginning, the button is disabled because both text fields are empty. So let's enter something into the email text field. Let's enter something into the password text field and then you can see the button becomes enabled. Once we tap on it, it changes to a loading state and after one and a half seconds, it gets back to enabled. Realistically, here you would dismiss this login screen and show your actual app. Okay, so in this video, you learned about creating a login field with reusable password fields, toggle to show or hide the password, focus management, combined form validation and a lot more. If you want to learn more about iOS development, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.